<laughs> All right, man, listen, I tweeted something out the other night. I think this is probably where this topic came from. And I kind of said something along the lines of, we don't talk about Gaudi enough. You know, like the last several months, there's been kind of this weird gap that's been created. We talk about NVIDIA, H100, now the B series and the, and the Grace Blackwell. And then we talk about homegrown silicon being provided by uh, the, the, the cloud providers. And we've talked, you know, it's it's NVIDIA AMD. It's like NVIDIA has it and AMD's they're they're looking at them and that's the competition. And then over here we're looking at, but we do talk a lot about accelerators. You actually had a great um, a great uh, tweet this week about ASICs and the need to create standards so that, you know, we can scale um, the development in that particular area, Pat. But one of the things that, you know, we haven't talked a lot about is Intel and whether or not, you know, an, I know we like to talk about 2025 and their potential GPU, but Pat, we've talked a lot on the show about how ASICs uh, and, and, and you know, even the XPUs can be very competitive in certain cases to NVIDIA. And in uh, this week, Intel put out a, you know, a newsroom post. This probably isn't like a 20 minute discussion, but it's a few minutes here. And they basically talked about ML Commons putting new results, industry standard ML Perf uh, benchmark for inference. And it basically noted that the Gaudi 2 and fifth gen Intel um, with their AMX, which is, you know, their accelerated uh, extensions, uh, essentially can be a very um, good alternative to H100s for generative performance as it relates to inference, Pat. And I, and, and I guess I just was thinking to myself when I'm looking at this is, gosh, why does nobody talk about Intel? Uh, why is Intel being written off? Now, of course, I can give you a quick argument of that because they haven't talked about enough big cloud wins yet, you know? And I think the fact that, you know, we've we've heard about Gaudi, we're seeing its performance. By the way, this is a really strong performance with their Gaudi 2, and guess what's coming? Where is it? Oh gosh, Gaudi 3? Gaudi 3.5, no, I'm kidding, that's GPT. Gaudi 3, so the point is with their almost last generation, you know how we love to do the generations thing, Pat? We love to talk about well, gosh, you know, NVIDIA's chip that isn't even shipping yet is kicking AMD's butt. Well, hold on a second. You know, H100s were outperformed by, you know, in many ways by the new AMDs. And now, yes, NVIDIA's answered that with a product that's going to ship in the future, but same thing here. So now we have an Intel product that's coming that's more performant in certain inference cases than the NVIDIA chip. Now, said that, Pat, you and I, I think, have to be very, very clear because we know a lot of people in the chip space listen to us. This is not a GPU. It is not does not have flexibility and programmability like a GPU. But in cases where inference in language is super important, this is a really efficient, uh, per performant alternative with strong specs, strong metrics. Um, and you know they talked about it on Llama, on uh, Stable Diffusion, on um, Hugging Face text generation. So on a number of different workloads, this particular chip performs. So you know. The moral of my story is, you know, the world loves to write off Intel, and I'm sure Pat Gelsinger is, you know, loves what he calls the perma bears. I just think, you know, between now the Gaudi three and then 25 when they start to deliver their GPUs, if this, if there really is a 250 and upwards of potentially 400 billion dollar TAM for GPUs over the next four years, five years is what we're hearing. I think there's a real shot Intel's going to get a piece of that business, and I know I'm a little too positive on Intel. I hear it sometimes from people. But people like to always tell me why they're right. And I like to mark it as this date, 329, 2024, when I told them I think they're wrong. Wow. You left me a little oxygen. No, let me take a little bit of a difference. So first off, the claim was not that it was better performance with Gaudi 2. It was that it was best price performance. Okay. And, you know, it's 40% uh, more. And, you know, when, when I stand back and say, hey, would I, would I shift for 40%? For I, I probably wouldn't if I needed kind of three years of different types of, of models. Uh, but if it's a steady state workload, 40% is, is, is a ton, okay? The one thing that got a little bit buried in the lead was that uh, Intel Xeon was the only processor tested or, or SOC tested with, and, and like you said, AMX 
uh, extensions. And, and think of AMX as a little accelerator that sits on the Xeon uh, SOC. And I think that's I think that's a major accomplishment in that we didn't see anything from AMD. Now, AMD does not uh, have acceleration capability like AM, AMX. Uh, it, it does, you know, have have a uh, massive um, FPU and then uh, a massive matrix uh, engine that's leveraged by SSC2. But that's very different and less efficient for many workloads compared to uh, uh, AMX. You know, Dan, we have debated on this show that, you know, if only two people showed up for a gunfight, was there really a gunfight? And one thing I did uh, appreciate from ML comments, this is David Cantor. You know, you we've all been on, you know, briefing calls uh, together. And he said, submitting to ML Perf is quite challenging and a real accomplishment. Due to the complex nature of ML workloads, each submitter must ensure that both, both their hardware and software stacks are capable, stable, performant for one of these types of ML workloads. And uh, that message was directed at Dell, Fujitsu, NVIDIA, and Qualcomm that submitted data center focused power numbers. Uh, but those power numbers had to be run while you're running the the ML uh, 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 inference uh, out there. So I, I think it's, first of all, it's good to acknowledge why others uh, weren't uh, on there. Um, but I still kind of question that if you only have two people show up for a certain benchmark, uh, what's the value uh, of that? So... Not something, I mean, we've already debated that, I think, on these ML Commons uh, benchmarks, but I think it is a, a reflection of um, the difficulty of, of AI in uh, totality. So, Dan, let's move to the next uh, topic. Can I say one thing? Please. I'm glad you called it out. I want to make sure I'm, I'm correct when I said it. I said on par, not equal, but I, I said it, and I believe it's A100s that it actually outperformed H100s, that it was near par. So I should say near par, not outperform. If I said outperform, I was wrong. I'm correcting myself. 